we've all heard of the rhyme of how Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. And when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. It is freezing out here. I'm over here in Ashland, Kentucky. And behind me you will see the house where Emma Sloan murdered her two children, John and Margaret, with a hatchet. The house still sits here in Ashland, Kentucky. Emma Sloan, she was from Ironton, Ohio, and this is where they lived in 1925. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Penny Press. So I'm out here in Ashland, Kentucky, to tell you this story and it is so cold out here like I'm freezing um it's glad I'm glad to see you all here hope everybody's having a great day I'm going to tell you the story about Emma Sloan Emma Sloan was originally her maiden name was Layman Emma Layman Sloan and she was from Ironton Ohio when you leave Ironton Ohio you will come down the highway to, and you'll come into a little village called Colgrove, Ohio. And this is all Lawrence County, Ohio. And then about, oh, maybe a quarter mile up the highway, you'll come to the Ashland Bridge. And this bridge will take you from Lawrence County, Ohio into Ashland, Kentucky. So it's just the, um, Ashland is just across the Ohio River from Lawrence County. So you cross this bridge and you come into Ashland, Kentucky. Now this is where Emma Sloan, her husband John Sloan, and her two children, Margaret Sloan and John Sloan Jr. all lived at in their house in 1925. Have you ever heard a mother say, I brought you into this world and I can take you out? Well, Emma Sloan said it was her God-given right to kill her children and that's what she did. Emma's two children was John N. Sloan and he was 19 years old in 1925. John had been born with a developmental disability. He was born a, a deaf mute. He was deaf and he couldn't talk and plus he was had uh, developmental disabilities. Emma's daughter her, she named her Salome Margaret Sloan. Salome was after her mother. Margaret was after her husband John's mother. But they just called her Margaret. Margaret was um, 15 in 1925. On the morning of April the 19th, 1925, Emma got her husband, John E. Sloan, off to work at the CNO Railroad. Her children were still in bed sleeping. She went outside to feed the chickens. And this is the full confession of Emma Lehman Sloan. Stop For it. a long time, I had been thinking about doing away with John. He was so helpless, such a pitiful case. He had been deaf and dumb since birth. It is better that he is dead. I knew that if I did away with him, I would have to go too, for I loved him. 
and I couldn't leave pretty, sweet Margaret alone in the world, so I decided I would have to take her with us. So, after John, my husband, had gone, I went out into the yard and fed the chickens. I came back, and the first thing I knew, I had the hatchet. I went to Margaret's room. I started to strike her, but I couldn't. I tried to decide on other means. I went downstairs and knocked loose gas connections, but the house is large and I couldn't smell gas much. Finally, I went back and struck Margaret in the head. She moaned, and I felt sick. I hacked again and again. I did not want her to suffer. John was next. I chopped and chopped. Then I tried to hit myself, but I was weak. I couldn't strike myself hard. I ran to the bathroom and chopped the gas connections loose with the bloody hatchet. I dropped the hatchet. That's the last thing I saw as I lay down with my head near the hissing gas. That is all I know. Right here you have the grave site of the Sloan family. This is the Sloan plot in section 7 at Woodland Cemetery. In the back, you'll see John Sloan's father and his mother. In the middle where it says Sloan, that's John's first wife, Nanny. And he had a stillborn child with Nanny. She died in childbirth. And the grave isn't marked unless the baby's buried near her. But the baby died like probably eight days before she did. And then in front of her, you'll see the graves, the three graves right here. Here's Emma, who died in 1930 from cancer of the liver. And her two children, John N. Sloan and Margaret Sloan. But this is where they are buried. John E. Sloan, the father, he's over in section 9 in lot 210, and I'll take you over there. This is the grave site of John E. Sloan. John died in 1933, but Emma died in 1930. So in a matter of three years, John remarried to Viora Lambert. So John is not buried in the Sloan plot with his first wife, Nanny, his stillborn child that he had with Nanny, or with Emma, John, and Margaret. They're buried in the Sloan plot with John's parents in Section 7 at Woodland Cemetery in Ironton, Ohio. John, however, is buried in the Lambert plot with Viora's family because that's where she buried him at when he died. I don't know how long John and Viora were actually married. The Lambert plot is actually right in front of the statue of Osa Wilson that holds a lot of history and stories here in Woodland Cemetery. But that is where John E. Sloan is buried in the Lambert plot. Now, like I said before, Margaret was a junior in high school when her mother killed her. She went to Ashland High School. The yearbook committee for Ashland High School in 1925 made a page in the yearbook in memory of Margaret Sloan. In Memoriam, Margaret and Sloan, 1909 to 1925. In loving remembrance of Margaret Sloan, do we set aside this page. Margaret entered our school as a freshman and departed as a junior. 
She was one who gave her best and derived much from school life. She was loved and respected as an excellent student, a faithful church worker, and a loyal friend. She was an enthusiastic member of the Girls' Reserve, the Latin, and the Romance language clubs. Although Margaret is gone from us, the memory of her kindness, her courage and gentle friendship is silently urging us onto the purest and best things in life, though back to dust the body goes. And still forever is the breath, until the door of time shall close while memory lives, there is no death. Anna Armstrong, Lucille Ashworth, Lottie Patton, committee. So Emma blamed her son, John N. Sloan, for her temporary insanity. She said that constant worry and fear of John was the reason why she killed her children. She said that he was mentally deficient, and in his later years that he was subject to violent rages. He would pull out Emma's hair. She said that she allowed him to do this because it seemed to quiet him. Well, several months before the murders, Emma and her son, John, they were going to Portsmouth, Ohio. And when they got off the ferry at Colgrove, Ohio, John had ran away from her. And she found him with the ticket agent, Charles Shepard. She found him hiding under the desk uh, where the ticket agent was at. Well, Emma had thought about taking a car to Colgrove and then taking the, riding the train to Portsmouth. But John violently objected, she said. And he started to use belligerent gestures and Emma tried to explain that he wanted to ride the afternoon train. So to quiet John, she said she waited three hours for the train. So Emma said she lived in constant fear that John would hurt somebody. So she blamed her son, her disabled son, for the fact that she killed her children. Emma Lehman Sloan, the daughter of Charles G. Sloan and Salome Smith. This is her plot where she, where she now lays in Woodland Cemetery, right beside the two children that she killed in 1925. Emma only did six months in the Eastern State Hospital in Lexington, Kentucky. They declared her to be temporarily insane. Six months later, she was cured and she was let out of the hospital. In the 1930 census, Emma's living with John and Ashland in their house still in the same house that she killed her children in. And also living in the house, they have a maid. Emma died in 1930. John remarried to Viora Lambert. The marriage didn't last long because John died in 1933. She got away with the murder of her developed mentally disabled son and of her beautiful daughter but ironically Emma was buried on the fifth anniversary of her children's death I hope you enjoyed the story this is Penny Press like subscribe share thanks for watching